Hi everyone, and uh, welcome to the webinar. Um, we're running this session today in order to help address what is a, a really a key discussion point at the moment with most of our customers, and that is the upcoming transition from existing UK GAAP to the IFRS Disclosures Framework, which is due to commence on the 1st of January 2015. I appreciate that on the webinar today we've got a mixture of registrants, some of whom are new to the OneSource Accounts Production tool and who will be seeing it for the first time, and also some of our existing customers who are perhaps currently working in OneSource under UK GAAP but who are planning for the transition and perhaps interested in seeing how the tool is geared up for IFRS. As we described in the invitation, Thomson Reuters has, template, has had templates for FRS 101 and 102 built into the OneSource Accounts production platform and available to our customers for over 12 months now in preparation for these changes. But with the mandatory transition date drawing nearer, we thought it was important to conduct an introduction to these templates and present how these work uh, alongside a discussion around how important it is to consider these changes early. This webinar is part of a series of webinars that we're conducting on an ongoing basis concerning the various products in the OneSource portfolio, highlighting unique functionality updates. Uh, so please do look out for further updates after today's session. Um, throughout the webinar, you can use the chat facility on the right-hand side to ask us any question. Um, the questions will be compiled and hopefully answered before the end of today's session. However, if we do run out of time, I'll be sure to come back to each of you with an answer to your question after we've finished. Please also uh, be aware that the webinar is going to be recorded and it will be made available for distribution after the session. All right, so in terms of what we will be looking at today, an agenda, What we're going to be doing is taking you through a high-level overview of the OneSource Accounts Production version 6 platform, with a focus on the new legislative framework in which it sits. Um, during this session, we'll cover a brief overview of the new accounting standards and why it's important to start planning for this transition early, some of the typical challenges faced by tax and accounting professionals and how the integrated suite of products offered by OneSource helps you to overcome these, an introduction to OneSource Accounts Production the benefits of using a financial reporting tool and a brief overview of how the platform works. And then I'll hand you over to Graham who will take you through a brief demonstration of the tool and highlight new functional areas and the EFRS 101 and 102 templates. I'll just uh, let Graham introduce himself. Good afternoon everybody. My name is Graham Tilbury and I am the Senior Solutions Consultant for the OneSource Accounts Production team in our EMEA region. I've been working in the accounting and tax solution space for the last 20 years, uh, 15 years inside the big four and the last five years with Thomson Reuters. And in my spare time, I'm also a member of the Chartered Institute of Taxes Management of Taxes subcommittee. And myself, I'm Helen Daly. I'm an account manager here at Thomson Reuters and I'm responsible for developing new business opportunities for one source products across the UK and Europe. Um, I'm here as a direct point of contact for customers who are interested in learning more about OneSource products, and I manage the sales process from start to finish for all of our OneSource products, including OneSource accounts production. My role also involves developing strategic relationships with our existing OneSource, OneSource customers and developing and promoting the OneSource brand in the marketplace. So if any of you have any queries on today's webinar, or if you'd like any more information about any of our products, then please don't hesitate to get in touch with me after today. If we move on now to, I guess, the backdrop for today's session, um, I'm sure everyone is aware of the upcoming changes to UK GAAP as it stands, but I'll just quickly provide a brief summary for them for you. So old UK GAAP as we know it will cease to exist from the 1st of January 2015, and anyone on the current UK GAAP will need to adopt a new standard. For those who are currently applying UK GAAP, the most likely options for you will be to move to FRS 101 or FRS 102, um, although adopting full IFRS is also an option. FRS 101 is broadly IFRS, but with reduced disclosures. Although FRS 101 is a company's act set of standards and not ISA, IASB, it's therefore got specific requirements around disclosures as to the company's act, so that's worth bearing in mind. Um, FRS 102 is being turned UK GAP plus or timing difference plus approach and in many ways it's an extension to the current UK GAP in terms of its calculation. 
So what we've got here on the screen is a graphic which summarises who can apply each of the four main standards. As a reminder, all entities can apply EU adopted IFRS, but this is mandated for those who are currently producing consolidated accounts for EU listed groups. Those that are not required to adopt IFRS can adopt either FRS 101 or FRS 102. And the decision between which to choose is likely to be based on multiple factors. Uh, it's probably likely that most IFRS groups will be adopting FRS 101, while the remaining will adopt 102, but this is down to the organisation and there's multiple factors at play. Uh, and of course, for those who are considered a small company, as per the company law definition, will have the option of adopting the Frizzy standards instead. So, why is it important to consider this now? Well, while there's the option to early adopt, a lot of organisations we speak to are planning to adopt the new standards for the first time in 2015. Some are still in the planning stages and haven't yet decided which standards they're going to adopt or when, but we would urge you to consider this transition earlier rather than leave it to the last minute, and I'll explain why. For those with December year ends, adopting in 2015 really means preparing for the balance sheet date 31 December 2015. And this is certainly when the vast majority of people are telling us they'll be doing it. But as a reminder, as part of that preparation, you will need to prepare a statement of comprehensive income in the new terminology for the preceding year to give you your prior year, prior year comparatives, including the opening balance sheet position at 1st of January 2014. So even for those not early adopting the new standards, you may wish to consider preparing IFRS accounts alongside preparing your accounts under your current gap in 2014 or at least shortly afterwards while that's all fresh in your mind. So there are real benefits to considering actually looking at this earlier than 2015, uh, and this is the reason Thomson Reuters has made FRS 101 and FRS 102 templates available within the software well in advance of these changes to the regulatory framework in order to enable our customers to work confidently within the software with access to both new and existing accounting standards, to easily prepare your prior year comparatives, and to have all of the most current content and updates available to you within the software. So, regardless of which standards you choose to go with, and when you decide to make the transition, you can be confident that one source is set up for IFRS, and our existing users have been producing reports and filing under the new standards for over 12 months now. In terms of some of the modern challenges that are faced by finance departments, we're going to touch on those briefly now. Um, a lot of these will be familiar to you, I'm sure. Um, they fall into three main categories, including increasing organizational complexity, legislative trends, and business pressures to reduce time, cost, and risk. One source is all about making the lives of tax and accounting professionals easier through the appropriate application of technology. Tax and finance professionals typically spend a lot of their time in Excel spreadsheets and Word documents manually manipulating data, which is time consuming, and invites risk. Our aim is to take you away from these manual processes to provide technology that helps automate that work and free up time to focus on value add activities. So if we have a look at the one source product suite, some of you will be familiar with this suite, others will be seeing it for the first time. As you can see, we have a range of solutions for tax and accounting each of which is a powerful point solution in its own right, but between which we are creating effective integration links to help data flow between applications, reduce the time invariably spent rekeying data, and minimizing the risk of manual er errors. The real value we can deliver to you comes from the breadth of the software applications that we have and how these work together. The integration and the efficiency savings are something that's unique in the marketplace today, and it's what we believe gives our clients a real edge in developing long-term, effective tax and accounting strategies. So, looking at one source accounts production in particular. As a background, organizations typically use Word and Excel to produce their statutory accounts. This means a lot of time is spent completing manual tasks like manipulation of data, formatting in Word, dealing with audit adjustments, etc., which is all time that could be spent better on value-added work. OneSource Accounts Production is a global platform that's used by finance teams to efficiently prepare statutory and group accounts. It effectively allows organizations to standardize and to automate the production of their financial statements, including IXBRL tagging, which frees up the finance team's time as well as reducing the risk involved with manual errors. There's also a significant potential to benefit from reduced audit fees by getting the accounts pre-approved and signed off prior to commencing work. 
The one source accounts production platform has been in the market for a long time now. It's been used by corporates and firms alike for over 10 years. It's a key part of the one source product suite. And like all of our products, we've invested significantly in its development to ensure that it's the most functional and relevant in its space. As well as being the only provider in the marketplace offering our clients an IFRS ready solution as standard in our accounts production platform, we're also building out the platform globally to allow for multi-country filings with most of the major European jurisdictions to be covered by the end of 2015. So, why use a financial reporting tool? Well, the main reasons organizations implement accounts production software is to reduce the time spent producing statutory accounts and to eliminate the risk that surrounds manual processes. In terms of control, one source accounts production is a controlled environment for producing statutory accounts. It automates data entry from the GL or the consolidation system. It allows organizations to standardize and manage their own corporate templates. It introduces an order trail functionality and it eliminates data entry errors and version control issues. In terms of efficiency, one source accounts production minimizes the time and effort associated with producing accounts manually in Word and Excel. It standardizes disclosures, updates and rolls forward, and smart reports means data logically links throughout your statutory accounts. Compliance-wise, Thomson Reuters maintains standard templates for multiple GAAP and IFRS accounting standards within the platform, and this is to ensure that you're producing accounts that comply with the relevant reporting standards, but still have the flexibility to maintain your own corporate templates within the system. We also fully automate IXBRL compliance by ensuring that all of our templates are tagged with the full IXBRL taxonomy. Just to delve a little bit more into the control aspect, here's how the OneSource platform helps you to standardize your reports by creating a simple hierarchy of templates. At the top level, there's a standard master templates within the software, which feature content that's maintained by Thomson Reuters. This means we update the template as required in line with legislative changes and any changes to the IXBRL taxonomy. The Thomson Reuters Professional Services Team, or the customer, then uses these standard master templates to produce client-specific organization templates at the, at the group level. And this will include any group-specific customization. Then, below that organizational template, any changes can be made at an entity level to reflect particular company requirements. What this means is that any updates made at a standard template or a group level will filter down to the individual statutory accounts giving a client a standardized and automated way of managing statutory accounts and disclosures right across the group. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an introduction to how the platform operates. I am now going to pass over to Graham to uh, take you through the software. Thank you, Helen. What we have on screen in front of you now is the one source accounts production solution. Currently we're sat within the front screen of the software and I'll just mention a couple of the major areas here. The list shows me all of the different companies or entities that I have set up within the software product. You'll see that I can order these lists by codes and names I have ready access to see on screen the latest financial period and I can see which of the Thomson Reuters master templates or client specific organizational templates has been used to create any of these organizational entities. From within the file menu I have the ability to create new organizations based on any of the standard Thomson Reuters templates whether we are looking at full IFRS and GAP, the new standards under FRS 101 and FRS 102, as well as a variety of other entity types. I'm now going to open up the top client on my list, Blue Limited, which is an organization that's been set up under the new reporting standard of FRS 101. You'll see the software is loading up the relevant data and having gone in, I'm now looking at a summary screen where I can begin to see the data which I need to track for this particular organization. In this summary area, I have access to a lot of general structural data about this company which may not necessarily change outside of an accounting period, which is why we keep track of it 
at this summary level. I have an entity structure area. This allows me to define the structure of any organization that I'm preparing accounts for, whether that organization is going to be a simple company without multiple divisions and branches, whether we do have multiple additional structures within the entity, or if in fact we're going to be consolidating that particular organization from a number of subsidiary areas. I can select a lot of general information about this organization, names, trading information, registration numbers at the company register, whether or not I'm actually preparing this entity as a company or as a group, and whether or not we are applying FRS 101 for the first time. I also have easy access to create and maintain lists of entity officers, names of auditors, solicitors, bankers, and so on. All of this information only needs to be entered into the software once and will roll forwards with the company year on year. It's also worth noting that as Helen showed in her slides, all of the information which is available here, which I've entered into this company, could also form part of a template for all of the companies within your organization. Uh, and I just want to stress at this point that creating templates within the system is a straightforward user activity and does not require you to have any knowledge of software or coding. It's a simple user interface choice to publish the current period of this entity and to make that a new template. So typically, our customers will take the software and will enter in all of the common information, not only on this screen, but also in terms of setting up their chart of accounts, creating common disclosures, and creating changes to the look and feel of their statutory accounts before publishing that to become the new template for their organization for all of their companies. Within a particular accounting period, I have additional screens where I can bring data into the solution, where I can then perform any journals that I need, and where I can modify any disclosures before generating the reports relevant for this organization. There is a standard import wizard, whichever of the standards you are using, whether it's old UK GAAP, new UK GAAP, IFRS, or the reduced disclosures framework. And the import wizard allows me to reach out and find an underlying Excel spreadsheet or text or CSV file, which would be the current output from your source ledgering or consolidation system. And the import wizard will then allow you to process that file and bring the data into the software against your corporate chart of accounts. Once that data is brought into the software, it's then a case of taking the whole of your list of corporate descriptions and allocating those into a reporting structure for the relevant gap. So what you'll see here is that we've already created that allocation so that the different account codes or trial balance descriptions for my revenue items have already been allocated into the reporting categories so that we can then generate the statutory accounts. And again, an item such as this would typically be set by a client organization as part of their template. Having brought that data into the system, we can then access and review that imported data. And we also have the ability within the journaling system to create new journals so that we can adjust the opening trial balance data as necessary for the statutory accounts reporting. I can then classify any of these extra journals. So here we have created a, a gap adjustment journal, and that has been classified against a gap adjustment caption. And this will allow me 
to create an extended trial balance or a stat to gap report so that I can see for my own internal purposes and share with the auditors a straightforward approach of column by column from original trial balance through the various adjustments to get to the final figures which we will see on the face of the statutory accounts. I have a disclosure screen and in this disclosure screen I can create whatever company specific disclosures or I can review any group wide disclosures that I require to go onto the face of the statutory accounts. A number of these are quite likely to be set as part of your organizational template. Where it comes to the new standards we have an additional specific disclosure for the year in which you adopt and transition into either FRS 101 or FRS 102 that will allow you to provide the appropriate data entry for any of the reclassifications or remeasurements of the figures as part of generating the correct disclosure notes within the statutory accounts for the year of that adoption. In the report section, I can then review the information that I have, whether from the trial balance or on the face of a set of accounts. If I just first of all open up the trial balance, and you'll see here that within the trial balance, I can see by the imported account descriptions and account codes, by the company's own descriptions how I'm pulling through that information and I can then expand out the current period or the prior period to show how I get to those final figures which are going onto the face of the statutory accounts moving through from the originally posted values and on through the gap adjustment that we just saw and if I just move down you'll see where those figures come through in the revenue section against that adjustment column. This can be accessed on screen, but it can also of course be printed, put out into a PDF, or potentially dropped into Excel to onwardly share. Going back to the actual full set of accounts, What we will do is open up a vanilla set of FRS 101 statutory accounts and we'll have a look at the layout of this standard. Just refreshing through the journal adjustment there. We have a navigator on the left hand side of the software here so I can move between the different sections within this set of statutory accounts. and you'll see that we've automatically created the transitional note based upon the information provided through the disclosures area so that we can see how we need to adjust our figures moving from old UK gap. This can either be presented as a single transitional note within the financial statements or if it's more appropriate we can represent these adjustments as an additional column within the main primary statements and within the balance sheet note areas as well. The software provides checks and balances so if I haven't completed an analysis of my information or if I haven't gone through the process of allocating all of my incoming general ledger information to a reporting category within the software it will flag up if there are any of these check errors throughout the software. It will also flag up for me any XBRL validation issues and it will also run a basic gap check across the system. 
these bits of functionality are not only available on the face of the reports, even if I'm in another area within the solution, I also have a warning screen and I can use that warning screen to access the same information. So I can then see whether or not I have any gap validations, whether or not I have to check any numeric validations, whether I have any XBRL validations, or indeed whether or not I have any spell check errors. So all of that's available. I can have that warnings panel permanently pinned open if I want, or I can just leave that to slide shut. One of the other things to briefly note is that within the software, I also have the ability to integrate it with the OneSource corporate tax environment. So if I wish, and I'm using both the OneSource corporate tax and the OneSource accounts production solution set, I can push out from the accounts production environment an interchange set of data, which can then be consumed by the OneSource corporate tax system. So if I just quickly jump into the OneSource corporate tax software, and I'll just go into Green Company here, which was my FRS 102 organization, then I can just run the data import from the accounts production solution. I can pick up the interchange file, and I can process that into the system and instead of having an uncompleted expense and income analysis section of my D-series, all of this data is now automatically populated and supported and analyzed out within the corporate tax environment, giving me full access to all of the profit and loss information that was held in the accounts production post all of my adjustments and also populates within the C-series of the corporate tax product any of my fixed asset additions and disposals. Just going back into the accounts production system now, uh, we've already had a quick look at the main functional areas around the summary screen, the import wizard, the journaling section, how we allocate the corporate chart of accounts into the reporting structures for FRS 101. We've also then had a quick look at an extended trial balance and we've spoken about the validations within the system, the integration into one source corporate tax, and we've had a quick look at how we can then bring up a full final set of statutory accounts and review those. We also have the ability within the solution to make any custom edits that we require within the set of accounts. And so I'll just very quickly show you how to do an inserting of a new block of text. So I'm just going to here, within the profit and loss account section, my FRS 101 section, and I'm just going to move out of the review mode and into a design mode. And this will allow me to create an entirely new entry on the face of this set of accounts. And I'm just going to go in and add a new blank paragraph. This will then allow me to enter in some additional text, perhaps a, a new disclosure that I want to draw to somebody's attention on the face of the profit and loss account as a footnote. Um, Turnover in this year includes an acquired business and was the value of X million. So I have the ability to type new text into the software. I can copy and paste from Word or Excel, but the, the fundamental thing that I just want to draw to your attention is that the software allows you to absolutely maintain the integrity of all of the information within the software package 
from end to end, very much echoing what Helen was saying during the introduction. So rather than going in and searching to type through an appropriate value that I've worked out off system, instead of entering that in manually, I can actually use the linking functionality within the software, allowing me to maintain my integrity. So I can then either go out and pick up by category value. So if I already have an item allocated into the reporting structure for FRS 101, I could pick that up. It may be that on this occasion, I need to go and pick up that value from within the general ledger, in which case I could pick it up by the corporate account code. And I can then just go out and I can browse through the list of all of my available accounts. And I'm just going to pick up the, the sale of goods element here. And we'll assume that that was from my acquired company. That allows me to link through this data automatically. I can choose the period I'm linking it through for. I can change roundings and scalings. And I can even lose the sign convention from the credit balance as I'm going to put this number into a narrative note. And that allows me to link that value through. And having done that, I'll now see that I've got my new paragraph here. And that that's now bringing it through with the appropriate comma dot notation for me onto the face of the accounts. So that's a quick walk through of the main functional areas of the accounts production system. And as part of that, we've gone through and shown you this using our FRS 101 template. This is a template that which has been out and in live use with clients for about 15 months. Um, and is something that we are very proud to have released when our clients required it of us for early adoption. Um, we haven't been waiting for things like the publication of the final FRS 101 and 102 taxonomies before releasing our product set, as we know that our clients are typically those who will end up needing to early adopt and require an appropriate solution at the timeline that they require. So that's the end of the short demonstration of the new standards within the accounts production system. I'm now going to pass control of the session back over to Helen to see what kinds of questions you've been submitting during the webinar. OK, let's have a look. Right. So we've got a question here um, that says, I wasn't quite clear about how a template would work for my organization. Does that mean I would only need to do the work once and then I would get all of my changes for every company? That would really save me a lot of time and give me control. Graham. Yes, absolutely, Helen. That's a, a fantastic question. The, the templating functionality within the OneSource Accounts Production solution is one of the major reasons that we see this being used by organizations rather than sticking with a, a straightforward Word or Excel approach to the preparation of statutory accounts, um, and also why we see it being used increasingly in-house in large corporates rather than outsourced. It's something which is entirely user-driven, and so you do have the ability to put all of your common data directly into the user interface of the software, and then you can publish that to create your own templates. And you don't have to be a, a software person or a code person to do that. Because you can publish that yourself, that gives you the ability not only to use that as a template when you create your first companies, but also it allows you to go back and update your template information and republish it. So that really does give you a lot of control to be able to enforce standardization between your companies which should keep the review and the audit time at the lower end. It should also make it more straightforward for all of your various stakeholders to understand the structure and the layout of your sets of accounts. It gives you the benefit of being able to take everything which is common and only having to deal with those pieces of information once, whether that's a, a list of directors 
or whether that's a mapping from your general ledger into the new standards. And it covers all aspects of the software. It's not just one of the screens or one of the reports. It's everything within the product suite. In fact, um, if I can just break into a very small anecdote here, um, early on in the, the use of the software, we did have uh, a client who set up some of their sets of statutory accounts within the system, uh, but they weren't using the template functionality because they didn't feel that they had enough sets of accounts to warrant it. And then as part of their publication process, they eventually found that one of their directors who was signing off the accounts um, had a different set of designatory letters from one set of statutory accounts compared to another because they hadn't gone down that process. So clearly you are giving yourself a much more robust process, you're saving yourself time and effort, and you are also making sure that you're presenting yourself in the best light as you generate your statutory accounts. Okay, great, thanks for that. Um, there's another question here. We have several complex companies in our group which are quite bespoke. Um, I can see there's standardization in your products, but can it cope with our particular circumstances? Okay, um, I guess that's a question about how easy it is to customize. Um, and I hope that having just dropped that paragraph in uh, as an edit on the face of the P&L at the end of the demo, you can see that it is actually relatively straightforward to put a, a simple textual change into the software. Um, in actual fact, once we've gone through the full training of users in the product, it is entirely possible for an organization to make very complex changes, should they wish, within the look and feel of the reports they're publishing and in terms of the way that the structure of the reporting is pulled together, calculated, and flows through the product. It's a, a place where I think sometimes we see confident clients self-implementing and making those complex changes, um, usually with some premium assistance from our professional services team. Um, nine times out of 10, I'd suggest if a client has very particular circumstances, it, it's more likely that as part of the implementation and deployment program, we would provide a small amount of professional services to the organization just to give them a head start, and then that organization would continue to maintain and update those bespoke areas within their organizational templates. Um, the last thing I guess to uh, mention at this point as well is that sometimes organizations feel that they have very complex sets of accounts, and we certainly wouldn't deny that, but there is already within the software uh, a lot of logic and conditionality in the way that the software generates its statutory accounts. So two sets of accounts which look very, very different may both already be catered for within the single template that Thomson Reuters issues. Um, yeah, typically clients may end up with 15, 20, 30 pages worth of a set of statutory accounts, uh, whereas our underlying templates are typically a lot closer to 200 pages of template statutory accounts. So there's an awful lot that we can pull in as appropriate for any particular company. Okay, excellent. Um, there is a question about tagging here as well, which we've touched on a little bit, but I think this is just asking for a bit of clarification. Um, are the accounts tagged and to which taxonomy of IACBRL? Okay, so that's um, an intriguing question and one which does beg an awful lot of questions. Um, at the moment, there are only two taxonomies which are supported by the Inland Revenue for the submission of statutory accounts. Um, and because it's only the Inland Revenue, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs, who mandate this rather than Companies House, it is the, the tax requirement that drives this for all of our clients. If you are submitting any of the new standards at the moment, then you are in the early adoption phase and they will have to be tagged against the main IFRS taxonomy. That is what HMRC has told all of the software vendors to do. At the moment, 
we have had a consultation draft of the new FRS 101 and FRS 102 taxonomies made available publicly. And within the vendor community, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs have very recently published their hopeful timetable for the actual publication of those new standards. At the moment, we are expecting them to be supported by the revenue for live submissions of data around the turn of this year. Um, they are hoping to get it out by the end of 2014. That may slip into early 2015. Um, and clearly, we will keep all of our clients updated as that program gets closer to its conclusion and we know whether or not the revenue have been able to roll that out successfully. Um, for all of our clients who are already using the system, they are submitting against the early adopted taxonomies. Uh, we haven't deferred releasing our new standard because of XBRL taxonomies not being available. Uh, we've taken the revenues advice on how to make these available to clients early, uh, which is why we've seen a number of clients coming to us for early adoption because we are an organization that has been able to fulfill that need within our software platform. Okay, excellent. Um, there's a question here that looks like it's from a, a client that's using the software currently. Um, we created a template under the UK GAP template with accounts production and customized it for our company. When switching to FRS 101, will we be in, in effect need to start again with creating a new company template? And what happens to all of the stats already prepared under our existing UK GAP template? Excellent. Okay, so if you're an existing customer, then there are a couple of considerations here. Um, clearly, there are a number of differences between the old UK GAP reporting and the reporting under the new standards. In this case, the question is asking about the transition into FRS 101. Um, and broadly speaking, because FRS 101 is a slightly UKized version of full IFRS, but with the bigger disclosures removed, you're going to end up with effectively a UK gap appearance to your primary statements, but then all of your notes are going to be in a full IFRS form of presentation. So there will be some significant reworking of the presentation and of the cosmetics around that template. So what we would do in that situation is we would leave the prior periods available under the UK GAP template within the software that you've been using to date. And then as you move into that transitional period where you are adopting FRS 101 for the first time, we would move across all of the static company data and we would move across your opening balances from the old UK GAP template and we would then embed that into the new FRS 101 template. So you then have all of the updates that you need for the new standard available to you. You'd have all of the comparative data and all of the static data brought across into that new entity and then we'd be able to support all of the gap checks, all of the updates around the taxonomy and the go forwards with that organization's company against those new standards. Perfect. Boy, I've got another one here. What other countries apart from UK and Ireland is the IFRS template available for? Okay, so the international approach to the software is something which is being driven forwards very actively at the moment. Uh, this is something that we've been talking about with clients for a couple of years, um, and we've just started the creation of a number of new templates. Um, in terms of what other countries we're looking at beyond UK and Ireland, I believe that the, the current release schedule is for France, the Netherlands, and Italy in terms of European countries by the end of this calendar year. I believe we've also got two or three countries in the Southern Hemisphere coming on tap as well. Uh, I think it's um, New Zealand and South Africa. Um, I can't remember the other one. Um, and then as we go into 2015 and 2016, we've got a, a long list of about another 40 countries that we're going to be bringing through. Um, that 
means that we've got um, a prioritization exercise at the moment that we're going through with about half a dozen early adopting large corporates on those countries. Um, and as we get within three to six months of the next release of those different international templates, that's something that we'll be able to share a little bit more widely with existing customers and people who are looking at the software for the first time. Um, as a slightly separate footnote to that, um, the IFRS templates within the European Union are all based on EU IFRS. Um, so it is also potentially possible if you want to look at taking an IFRS-based EU template and rolling it out into a different EU country, that could potentially be done with a, a limited number of bespoke modifications, but what that wouldn't do would be support electronic filing in a particular regime if we're just working from the base EU IFRS. So it's definitely going to be worth waiting for the official templates to come out so that we can support the e-filing arrangements around those unless there are particular client circumstances where you have an urgent hurry to get out paper-based copies for a, a large volume of sets of statutory filings. Lovely. Um, I've got a question here uh, about having the templates available. Um, how long have your early adopters been using your new standard templates for? Okay, I think I may have um, covered that in answering our other question, but um, we've had the FRS 101 template out and in use with a, a number of clients for slightly more than a year. Um, the FRS 102 template is only with a couple of beta test clients at the moment because our existing corporate requirements, uh, our current corporate customers, did not want to early adopt FRS 102. Um, so that's more being looked at with some professional firms at the moment rather than corporate customers. Um, there hasn't yet been the appetite for FRS 102, um, not amongst the early adopting community. Okay. Um, there's another question here about the integration between AP and CT. Does that work with other products? The, the one source product set is um, an open product set in some senses. So we're quite happy to export and import data between our individual products and other people's individual products. Uh, but what we can't do clearly is make other providers support our data standards. So in terms of the automatic movement of the, the TB information and the journal information from the account solution into the corporate tax product, um, that is something that we can only support and guarantee within the one source product set, um, though it is clearly uh, an advantage of having both products from the same vendor. Um, clearly, if you are able to access corporate tax trial balance information from a different accounts production provider, there are other mechanisms that you can use to pull that extended trial balance into the corporate tax environment. Um, if there's anyone else with any other questions, fire them at us. Um, otherwise, I hope today's been helpful for everyone. Um, anything coming through, Alex? Okay, there, there seems to be uh, a, a final question there about how big the differences are in terms of the, the UK GAP standard, the old standard, and the, the new standard, the FRS 102 standard. Um, I, I, I won't hold myself out to be an accounts technical expert here. So clearly, when organizations are performing those kinds of evaluations and are looking at it within their corporate structures, that is something that a, a technical accounting person or a large firm advisor would need to help you with. Um, what I can certainly say in terms of our software product is that there is not a huge change in terms of how you go about the process of creating your accounts how you bring the data into the system, how you move the account codes from one reporting gap to another. It's going to be on those technical matters which are actually going to sit outside of the product solution set. 
There's addition to that as well, how easy it'll be to switch to that with one source. So if you are using the, the one source accounts production solution, you will already have all of your data within the software. You'll already have an existing set of mappings between your corporate chart of accounts and the existing structures for UK GAAP or for EU IFRS within the UK. As you then move forward to adopting either FRS 101 or FRS 102, we can clearly move through forwards all of those comparative figures. We can pre-populate those into the new standard template for you. You will have to go through the process of deciding how you would like your new standards to present your organization. And so there will be a, a kind of a reporting output phase where you'll have to decide how you want that to look because any modifications that you make to the Thomson Reuters standard for UK GAAP are not going to necessarily be equivalent in FRS 101 or FRS 102. There may be some overlaps, maybe in the strategic report or the director's report, but not in the notes, for instance. So whenever you adopt a new standard, there will be some work to do, but certainly the one source software product set will make it as easy as possible for you and allow you to utilize the work that you've already put into the system for previous periods. Great. Any more questions? I think that's, uh, that's been a lot of things we've covered today. So thanks, everyone, for your, your interactions. There's some really good questions there. Put, uh, put grain through his paces. Um, yeah, I hope everything today has been clear um, and we hope it's been a, a helpful sort of a summary of the accounts production platform and how it deals with the, the new standards. Um, hopefully it's, uh, it's been a helpful session for you guys who are going through that planning stage at the moment. Um, as I said at the beginning, if there's anything that you want more information on, any queries that you have, anything that you want to know about any of the other products in the product suite uh, for OneSource, then please just reach out and uh, give me a shout or, or uh, give me an email and I'll, I'll get in touch with you. Um, obviously, we're, we're happy to answer any questions and to uh, provide more in-depth demonstration of the, the platform if required um, at any point in time. So feel free to contact us. Um, we hope that you, you got a lot out of today. And um, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, thank you Graham. It's been a pleasure.